Welcome to this week's Business Showcase. Today we have the pleasure of having Simona Hughes from Financial Utilities on with us. Hi Simona, how are you? Very well. How are you Louise? I'm good, thank you. So for those of you who don't know Simona, um, Financial Utilities is her baby I guess. She's the Managing Director. Um, they are accountants and business advisors with offices in Dunsborough and Perth and they do all those tax compliance you know, all that accounting jazz, but they also do business advisory services for small and biz big businesses across not just the Southwest, but Australia, and they look after some multinationals as well. So if you're looking for experience in big business and taking your business global, these are the guys for you to talk to. The other thing is that Simona's favourite thing to focus on is scaling, scaling and growing your business. So Simona, tell me, how did you get started? Oh, that was a really nice introduction. Thank you, Louise. Um, yeah, how did I get started? Look, I, I worked in corporate for nearly two decades. Um, I worked in Australia at KPMG, moved to London, worked in, in very large sort of multinational companies um, and, and slogged it out. I worked in banking and I did some analyst work, um, et cetera. I, towards the end of my stint in corporate, I started my own consultancy business in London. Um, and during that time, I then got, got married, got pregnant, uh, and then came back to, because I'm originally from Perth, um, so moved back to Perth and I had a small baby and I wanted to continue those consultancy services. Um, and so I started my consultancy business in Perth when my son was nearly one. Um, and that sort of morphed into, you know, me being the main consultant. Um, to then getting a lot of businesses wanting far more than just, um, you know, the consulting side. They want bookkeeping, they want tax, they want like a finance team that they can tap into. So I sort of evolved that way and hired staff. Um, we, you know, we're a team of five now and we've all got different um, skill sets. Uh, and, and basically we cover far more of the market than what little old me could do uh, by myself. So. So that was in Perth. About five years ago, we moved down to Dunsborough for a lifestyle choice with two little kids. Um, and I, I still do the same stuff. I just do it remotely. So, you know, work-life balance is important. Um, you know, we, we still get lots of clients in Perth, so I do travel up there. Uh, but yeah, we have a little bit more of a, a, a local focus as well, given that we've got more staff here. Um, and, and yeah, we, we're doing the same stuff, just more of it, I guess. Um, and yeah, we have an office in Dunsborough. I have a home office, which is where I am now. Um, and yeah, look, I love the SME market. That's the space I work in. I, I like the, the small businesses. I like to make a difference. Um, I've got that big corporate sort of background, but I do tailor it to the, the smaller end of town as well. Amazing. So tell me about scaling and growing small businesses. How do you help them do that? It's really good fun. Um, it is also very, very challenging. Um, there are lots of, you know, words that get banded around in the scaling and growth, you know, market around, you know, the valley of death and, you know, you know, jumping off the cliff. And it, and it is a little bit like that. Um, growing uh, can suck up a lot of cash. So you can grow broke. So a lot of the times businesses start off little they start to hire more staff, they start to buy more equipment, they start to, you know, do more stuff, and then they realise they've got no cash left. Um, and, and that's where I sort of come in and, and try and help them navigate some of these challenges. And also, it's more, far more complex. The bigger you get, the, the bigger the problems. Um, you know, we've got some clients that started off with literally, you know, a, a husband and wife team you know, eight years ago, and then now sort of pushing 20 million turnover. And the, the wow. challenges they had, yeah, they used to just be at a home office by themselves. They've now got nearly 80 staff. Um, and, and, you know, that is challenging. And, and to get them from that, you know, ground, you know, core roots um, into sort of almost like a corporate, you know, getting them to think like a corporate um, is quite challenging. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of techniques we use. There's a lot of, you know, technical knowledge we, we put into it. But essentially the underlying, um, I don't know, strategy is the business model. So really understanding what it is. And, and tweaking it as things get bigger. Uh, the bigger you get, the smaller your margins, the less money you make. And a lot of people don't understand that, but that's just, that's the reality. Uh, and you run out of cash and then you think, well, where am I gonna get the cash from to try and grow? 
Um, and, and, you know, and then you're taking more risks, you're remortgaging your house, you know, you're putting all your eggs in one basket and, and, and you lose a lot of sleep. And, that, and those are the challenges that small businesses have to go through because you don't have a lot of support. You, you're literally on your own most of the time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you just talked about business models and I know that this is something you're quite passionate about. So yes. let's talk about business models. I know small businesses shy away from this they discussion do. sometimes. Why they is do. that? I think because they think it's more complicated than what it is. I think a lot of people hear that word and go, oh, my God, there's like this big formula and there's this big spreadsheet that calculates it. It's not. It literally is on a one-page summary. Um, and, and really a business model is understanding what are you? Are you selling products? Are you selling services? Are you selling a combination of the two? Then you break that down and go, are you selling wholesale? Are you selling retail? Are you making commission? Are you paying rent? Or are you receiving rent? Are you lending money? Are you receiving royalties, franchise fees? I mean, the, the myriad of business models out there uh, makes it quite complicated, but essentially you just need to understand one thing. That is your gross margin. And, and I do talk about this a lot with businesses. Understand your gross margin. That'll drive everything for you. Um, no one cares about your revenue. The, the number one thing you need to care about is your gross profit. But to get to the point where you understand your gross margin, you know, can take a little, a little bit of work um, and a little bit of research as well. So there's a lot of benchmarks out in the market around sort of what your margin should be. Um, and as a business owner, you, you need to do some research and see, you know, what are the big corporates doing for their margins, but also what it... What are the small business, um, small to medium businesses um, achieving in terms of their margin? A prime example is you might be in the service, you, you might be a service business like a hairdresser or an architect or, you know, anything like that. Your margin might only be, say, 15%. You then compare that to others in your industry and you'll realise it's about half what it should be. So that then informs you, you know, where are you going wrong? Have you got too many staff? Have you got not enough clients? Hey, are you not charging enough? So that margin starts to get you thinking on every single element. Um, and obviously, there's a break even point it, it, to every business, which changes all the time, because the bigger you get, the you know, the higher that break even mark keeps creeping up. Um, so I think what happens with a lot of businesses, they start doing a business plan. And I hate that word, because a business plan is not it's not effective. Um, you know, understanding your business model is far more effective than going, what are my costs and what am I going to spend? Because you don't have a context around what that budget is. If you say to yourself, look, I want to spend 20, 30K on a new website and a marketing um, strategy to get more clients. But what it, how does that look in context to what you're actually selling? If your margin is so small, that you're actually not making a margin on that money you're spending. You're actually going to go backwards. So knowing how much to spend and how, you know, it's all about percentages, really. I spend my whole life looking at percentages. I don't really care about your business plan. Throw it in the bin. No one cares about it. Understand your model and be very strategic about it and tweak that, that gross margin over time. Um, and that's the way you grow. Because if you don't know those percentages, you're really going to get unstuck. You might hire another person and then you're not making the sales. What are you going to do? You, you end up in a loss. Um, and then that's, that's what I see every day. I, I see just a lot of businesses struggling to, to know what to do. Um, yeah, something so yeah. I'm he hearing a lot from accountants lately because obviously I talk to a lot of people just in what I do for BSW. Mm. And um, I'm hearing a lot of accountants talking about lately is think like you're a big business, behave Correct. like you're a big business. What are some of those steps that people can take to, to make those, I guess, mindset changes and those reporting changes to think like a big business and move like one? Yeah. Oh, great question. So what can you do to start from somewhere that is not a, you know, in the corporate space and get to that larger, larger entity? Understand your costs, your direct costs. I'm not talking about your rent. I'm not talking about your vehicles. I'm talking about what does it cost to produce what you're producing, whether it's you're manufacturing things or you might be selling stock that you bought from somewhere else 
or you might have staff and you might be providing a service. You might be a dentist, you might be a, yeah, an architect, an accountant. Understand what those direct costs are. Um, and what that involves is really assessing your business. What efficiencies have you got? What's your capacity? A, a big example is you might want to grow, but you've only got a warehouse. So you're restricted in how much you can produce because of your footprint and the machines you've got. You need to think, this is where I am now, but I want to have a bigger warehouse in five years' time because I want to grow that big. You need to start investing in, a, in, a, in another warehouse. You need to start thinking about what more machinery you need, how many more staff you need. All of those things are costs. And if you don't control those costs, suddenly you'll end up with more costs than income. So a, a, a good analogy I use, I guess, is, you know, look at your business in the percentage, like, like percentages, like a pie. So go, okay, I've got a whole pie. What portion of that is related to direct costs? What portion relates to marketing and expansion? And then what portion relates to overheads? Um, and once you realise that that pie, uh, most, of, most of the costs in that pie relate to direct costs, you can start to control it. Um, and report, in terms of reporting, use systems like Zero that can produce a report that tells you your margin and know what that margin should be. If you've got in your head that your margin needs to be 30% and you run your report in zero and it says 10%, you know you've got to do something. You then start going, well, what have I done wrong? Have I spent too much on stock? Have I spent too much on staff? Um, you know, have I not sold enough? Am I not selling enough? Did I forget to invoice people? You know, th there's so many questions that that can bring. But if you don't know what that percentage is to start with, you, you're kind of scrambling, you're kind of looking, going, I don't know what's going on and, I, you know, I don't know where to start. Um, big businesses do this. So monthly reports, we do monthly reports for a lot of businesses. The number one thing we look at is margin. Then we talk about everything else. Yeah, yeah so I've, ju something. I've just learned that in your in most accounting software that you can do that conversion to percentages yeah. on your report. Oh, and I just think, totally. I can't wait to try it on my own business. <laughs> Oh, and it's amazing. And you, and you can save those templates. So you design the reports you want in Xero, save it as a template and just run it constantly. And ask those questions. You know, if, you, if you're the main business owner and, and, and you're stuck because you, you don't know who to ask, start asking your friends. Look at the benchmarks online. L look at your peers um, and start, you know, asking around what everyone else is doing. Get help. <laughs> well, and I guess that leads to that people can call you for help. They can contact financial utilities yeah. for help. Uh, yeah, so of course. Yeah. As Simona said, they do have an office in Dunsborough and in Perth. So, you know, very wide span that they have there that can support you in your business. If you do want to find out more about Simona and her team or the services that they offer, please check out financialutilities.com.au. We will have a screen at the beginning of this video that will have her logo and her website on there. And in the post that we'll put this in, it will also have a link to her website and how to contact her. So, you know, get onto it, learn those ratios and start thinking big business, guys. Thank you again, Simona, for joining me. I've really enjoyed this chat today. No worries. Thanks for having me. <laughs>